everyone. My name is Harley Farkas, and welcome to my TED Talk presentation. So I don't know if you guys know this, but I'm actually a professional race car driver, professional soccer player, and I'm a Hunger Games survivalist <coughs> in some of the small communities that I participate in. I can tell that some of you don't believe me, so I can show you my Xbox gamer tag and my list of achievements that prove all of those are true. So welcome. Um, this brings us to my research question. Um, how can video games provide us with a sense of community? So this was kind of the big thing I focused my research upon, like community was the, the main thing and how video games can help us with a sense of that. So what was the big concept or what was I really researching? Um, video games was a part of it, community as well. But before I dive into my findings of my research, I want everyone, oh, whoops, yep, yeah, there it is. That's what kind of I've been focusing on. So before I dive into my findings, <coughs> I want everyone in this room to have a shared and concise understanding of what a community is. A community is a feeling of fellowship with others a, as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. Communities are all around us. Um, we may be part of several communities. Communities, <coughs> whether it may be a religious community, an athletic or academic community, or a community in which you live in. For Durango, we all do live in the Durango community, and inside that there are athletic ones such as shared interest of biking, or like the Devo team, or climbing, or skiing, like the ski team, or communities like I'm in. Um, my small friend group community is like an academic community that I have built in this school. So those are just some of the communities that we all see in our daily lives. <clears throat> This newfound understanding of community that I obtained through this project and my research has left me with many open-ended questions. What type of communities are good? What goes into building a good community? What makes a true community and what does that community provide for each individual? So before we get into that, let's start where it all began. Ever since my childhood, when I was about nine years old and I got my first gaming console, the Wii, and played Mario Kart and Super Smash Bros. all day, every day, I started to see a little interest in video games. Then, as I grew up and got into more different types of video games and bigger consoles, I knew that this was something that I could definitely develop a deeper interest for and see in my future. Then, here we are today, where I am doing a TED Talk on video games and communities and how they have affected my life. <coughs> so what was my framework? The framework and the layout <coughs> of how I was going to do my paper was all focused on what makes a community. In order to have a solid basis of the elements of community, I utilized David Spink's The Four Psychological Building Blocks of Community and Put, use that as the main thing I was going to base my research on. <clears throat> so the major trends and points for my research. So the first one is the four blocks. That was really the main thing. That's what really makes a community, and I'll dive into that in a little bit. And how uh, video games can connect to those four blocks. And then I compared other different communities to the video game community and those four building blocks and see how they all relay and see how they all can benefit us in different ways. So here are some examples. So going more into detail about these findings, we start off with the four psychological building blocks of community. And the first part of that list is membership. The feeling of belonging and shared sense of relatedness with community members and the community. So with video games, this is if you have a certain squad or certain teammates that you team up with and every player plays a certain role so the team can work together. So everyone <coughs> feels a part of like say a, f a specific video game like Fortnite, everyone it plays a certain role whether it's reviving or helping your teammates or 
um, shooting at other people. They're all a member of that community and they all play a certain role. The next is influence. Um, the sense that people have a say or influence on the community. This could be when certain people pick uh, what game you want to play or um, where you want to land on the map or what map you want to choose. Um, that's kind of where the influence comes in, where people have a say on where the community goes and what, like for video games, what the people do in the video game. Um, then comes integration and fulfillment of needs. So pretty much the player, the person gets what they were hoping for when they join the community. So like, if I'm an adamant soccer video game player, I want to join a community that can help me get better at the game and that can help me score goals and do all that so I'm looking for the fulfillment of my needs in that community so yeah for me it's winning so I want people who are going to help me win uh, and the next and last point oops the next and last point um, is sh a shared emotional connection so members have stories or experiences together that they can share with other people and they will continue to do so in the future so like Another example with FIFA, if like you, sco you guys score an awesome goal, one player passes it to the next player, the next to the next, the guy shoots, scores, you guys can relive that, know how that um, felt, can share that experience with others. So that was one of the biggest um, parts of my research. And the question I focused on was how do video games connect to these four factors? And for those reasons, that's how the video games can give us those four uh, basic building blocks of community. So after those findings on what makes a community, um, I wanted to see how other communities did the same and how they relate. So I looked at an article called The Social and Academic Benefits of Team Sports by Paige Mousen. And Paige goes into how teams are pretty much a small community. Everyone shares the same interest, whether it's the sport or to win the sport and everyone um, has their own individual part to that community. So that's whether you're like, for soccer, you play a defensive role or a midfield role, everyone um, gives to that community. Uh, <clears throat> these were some of the similar points to the video game articles. Um, everyone shares a common interest and they feel as if they belong. Um, when I compared the two communities, I found out that they're not very different at all. Um, it doesn't really matter where you, a community is its own thing, whether what the subject is on, like video games, um, you're always going to need those four building blocks to community. So for the team sports, all four of those are going to come in, and for video games. So um, there's not really much difference in the two. Um, I concluded that you can make a community out of anything, but it of course, has to reach those four common goals. So why should you guys even care about this? Well, first of all, community affects all of us, and I'm sure every single one of you are in a community. And <clears throat> communities help us feel welcome and a part of something bigger, and they help us find purpose in life. Plus, we all need to fit in, and different types of communities, such as video games or team sports, can help different individuals find where they need to fit in. That did for myself, where I found video games as an outlet where I could go and see people that share the same interests as me. And so that's where I got my passion for that. So the overall bigger importance of this subject is many things. <clears throat> the video game community as a whole and esports, which is like the competition part of video games, are growing at a fast rate and technology is taking over the world as we speak. So the thought of video games in your future is not unheard of. It can, oh, whoops. It can also be beneficial. Um, the part that I didn't really go into was like hand eye coordination can be developed from video games and stuff. and the community part as well, but there's also many health benefits. And most importantly, um, this is my passion, and the, this is what I like to do. 
Um, this is something that I find joy in every day, and it's something that I will continue to find joy in, and it's something that I would like to see myself do in the future. So it is very important for me. So after all that, I dare you audience members to try video games or watch a video game streamer or an esports tournament on your free time if you haven't already. If not this, I challenge you, especially mothers, to observe <laughs> video games from a perspective other than a waste of time, a distraction, or simply a game. But choose to see it as a passion and as a fun and exciting catalyst to connect people from all around the world to come together as a community. Thank you. All right, thank you, Harley. Um, so we're gonna move into questions. Audience members, you guys are welcome to ask questions and then panelists, obviously, as well. Um, so how exactly would you, or could you start like a video gaming community like here? Like excluding like your friends? Um, so what I was thinking about and what was going to be my senior project was the video game tournament, um, bringing together the kind of outside community into like one shared space and creating a tournament about it and like having people play against each other and making it like a fun environment and like having a prize at the end and yeah, just bringing everyone together. Um, I'm really curious, Harley, did you find in this research um, different impacts on sort of online communities or, or virtual communities versus like in-person communities? Did, did the research show like a difference in terms of their impactfulness or? Yeah, it definitely did. Like for um, real life, of course, there's a bigger difference because it can be like physical and this stuff is like, if you're spread out and um, yeah, so like there's, I feel like there's a deeper connection when it's like physical and people are um, face to face, whether then it's um, spread out. So that's kind of. Enough. I'm, I'm going to build on that as one of the moms that you challenged in the room. <laughs> um, so you know, the I think the the most common argument from the moms mm -hmm. is, well, you're not going to develop social skills and you're not building authentic relationships. Mm -hmm. Convince me that that's not true. Her son's future is dependent yeah. on Harley. Uh -huh. um, well, social <laughs> skills. Um, Pretty much the, all the social skills are there except to the face-to-face, -face. like you can talk to them, um, like live talk. So that's pretty much the social skills. And this is like, you have um, millions of players and millions of different personalities in these players. So you have a far <coughs> range to choose from. So when, when it comes to uh, like social abilities in real life, I feel like using some of like meeting new people and maybe being like sociable online instead of like hiding away, you could use that in real life. And then, what was the second part? Um, authentic relationships. Authentic relationships, well, um, I've known people, uh, I've read articles about people who have like met their lovers on like World of Warcraft and all these different games, so that can definitely happen, I feel like time like if as much time as you want to spend with that person will develop the relationship so if you play like one game with one person every day then I feel like the offense and like <coughs> it's whether you want to take it like the next step with like telling them your real name and stuff like can really build that authenticity so yeah can I, I can, can I ask one more follow-up question what about the issue of violence Violence is definitely something, and I touched that on that in my thesis, but um, I didn't really want to bring that up. But yeah, that could definitely happen. It's more on like the individual themselves and like what their real life has to do with whether they take the violence in a bad way or not. But yeah, if you'd like to read my thesis. Did, did you find research that suggested that um, people who engage in violent video games are more or less or neutrally mm -hmm. likely to commit violence? Yeah, violence? definitely. It's kind of like a, it's a broad scale, but mm -hmm. yeah, it can definitely uh, cause violent behavior. Mm -hmm. Owen? Uh, do you see video games as an outlet for certain kids? Oh, definitely. Um, like, uh, for me, it's an outlet because um, Whenever I'm feeling stressed, it kind of sounds bad, but I like to go shoot some dudes or something. <laughs> <laughs> or I like to score some goals because you get that like immediate satisfaction and it's uh, it's like a, 
short-term satisfaction, but it can also be long-term. So yeah, I can definitely see that as an outlet. Yeah. Do you ever get disappointment from that outlet? <clears throat> Most definitely, but that's the beauty of it. You could just try again, and you could try again until you do get that satisfaction. Mm -hmm. <coughs> so like you kind of just touched on it, talking about how they're an outlet for you, but like how video games benefited you personally. Um, well, like, I feel like I've definitely, I met one of my good friends, well, actually, he's been one of my good friends, but we stay in touch through video games, because he lives in Canada, and I only see him, like, once every two years, so I play video games with him, like, four times a week, and that, like, that just developed our relationship a lot, so that has been a benefit, and then my hand-eye coordination, I would say, is pretty good, because I play video games, and then as well as like um, my in-game stuff. Like I have a lot of stuff to show in-game, like for FIFA, um, it just like my team is worth, like you can pack, you build a team of players, like real life players, and they're each worth, <coughs> each worth a certain amount of coins and you can actually turn those coins into real money. And so I have a really good team and it's like a hundred forty dollars so that has benefited me too <laughs> <laughs> all right that's all the time we have for questions thank you guys thank you, thank you. send you out for a moment and then we'll call you back in